well hello students you yeah, are welcome back and as you are aware we are already discussing the different systems working in our body that is in the part of human physiology we have already discussed digestive system circulatory system and today we'll be dealing with respiratory system when we talk of respiratory system as you can see respiratory system has got two part at its own that is breathing and cellular respiration when we talk of breathing actually we are talking of gases exchange between lungs and air and when we talk of cellular respiration we are talking of that whatever the gas has been taken or inhaled or breathed in when reaches to the body cells as you remember i did say that there are 110 ki power 12 number cells per kg of our body weight now each of these cell is going to get the gas that we have inhaled that has been diffused into the blood now what happens to that gas and how is it being used up in generating the energy just like a power plant coal goes in oxygen is drawn from the air coal is burnt and when the coal is burnt the heat is produced which is used to do the work in same fashion our body cells are like the same we are using coal that is as a food oxygen we are getting from the air this food is going to get oxidized and will produce energy and the energy produced will help us to do work working means running walking sleeping even sleeping is working because my heart is beating and if i am dreaming still then it means my brain is also working and even when i take my turns when sleeping i am doing the work so all the time we are involved our body is involved in the work well the gravity of the work may vary it may be small or large like when swimming running etc so that is what we will be looking into in the today's system now when we talk of the respiratory system the respiratory system in general that involves the gases exchange the breathing part it starts right from the nose here we have got two nostrils two holes these are these holes are nostrils and they follow the nasal cavity and at one time if you realize the air passes through only one nostril just give it a try you will realize that the air is passing through only one nostril until unless there is a problem with the body then we may inhale that means breathe in or breathe out using both nostrils otherwise it's only a single nostril that is working and the air that we get in we breathe in it for it passes into pharynx from pa pharynx where comes the glottis a reason a flap like structure as we discussed in the digestive system also that directs the air towards trachea and foods towards the esophagus 
and from pharynx it passes to larynx and in larynx you know it's very visible particularly in the male members of the society if you see there is a part to bend there is a slight uphill structure in the neck region now this uphill region that we call as adam's apple is just above the larynx part that is the part of the respiratory system where actually the sound is produced as we speak what we have what is happening the air being exhaled air being breathed out passes through the larynx in larynx there are projections and these projections they vibrate and as they vibrate the the sound is produced you know the Uh, in physics, you must have heard that for the sound production of sound, it is necessary that there should be something that must vibrate. If there is no vibration, there is no way sound can be produced. So it is the projections within the larynx that, when vibrate, produce the sound. And down following the larynx is the trachea, which is made up of or which consists of C-shaped cartilages, like this. They are piled over each other. And these cartilages help prevent what you call as collapsing of trachea. What actually it means is collapsing. Let's take two balloons. One a fresh balloon and other with, uh, which has already been inflated once or twice before. Now inflate both balloons. You would realize that you need to apply a bit more pressure to inflate a fresh fresh balloon than the one which has already been inflated before. Because the first one, the rubber layers are collapsed. They are joined, while in other because the the balloon has been inflated before, there is some spaces already between the two layers of the balloons or the rubber rubber sheets. So as we breathe out, all the air goes out. The trachea may collapse. It's like this. It may collapse like this and get stuck like this, and then opening it again. may require a lot of pressure to avoid that collapsing coming closer the trachea is made up of cartilages which remain a uh, hollow structure hollow tube like structure where the air is going in or is going out and then trachea divides into bronchi into bronchus bronchus is singular bronchi is plural because one bronchus bronchus passes to the right and other to the left and then each of these bronchus inside the left side and right side further subdivided on the right side it divides into three one two and three because on the right side lung has got three lobes whereas on the left side because there is already heart is there space is being occupied of the chest cavity so on the left hand side the bronchus divides into two because there are only two lobes of lungs on the left hand side of the chest cavity or the thoracic cavity as you say and then both these lungs are seated over a flap like structure that we call as diaphragm that we call as diaphragm if you see the last two bones ribs these ribs are what we call as floating lips these floating ribs the last two uh, pair of ribs which are the floating ribs are where 
you see a sheet of muscular, a muscular sheet that we call as diaphragm. It goes up and down as we breathe in or breathe out. And all the lungs or the lobes of the lungs, they are protected from outside pressure. Already ribs are there. But still, although because within the ribs there is some space which is lined with the muscles called intercostal muscles, right? The further protection is provided and the layer that is providing the protection is what we call as pleura. What we call as pleura. That means the outermost layer of each of the lobe of the lung is pleura. P-L-E-U-R-A. So, in short, we can say that first, nasal cavity comes first. If we have to organize the order in which the air passes from air into lungs. That means it will be nostrils from nostril air goes into pharynx some also call it as nasopharynx because it is attached to the nostrils from pharynx it will go into larynx from larynx it will go into trachea from trachea into bronchi or bronchus, from bronchus into lungs. This is when we are breathing in. If we are breathing out, the order would be reversed. The, the order, the path of the air would reverse. Right? That marks that how the air we breathe in or breathe out comes, goes in or goes out. Because, as you know, when resting we don't realize that we are breathing. Have you, do you realize now? While sitting, uh, sitting uh, in the drawing room watching a TV or uh, reading or studying, you don't realize that you are breathing. That you are breathing in the air or you are breathing out the air. It goes so smoothly at a rate of about 14 to 16 times per minute. We realize breathing that we are breathing only when, when we get involved in some sort of exercise or heavy work that requires more of the energy, that means more of the oxygen, producing more of the carbon dioxide to be exhaled uh, simultaneously. Right? So let's proceed with some of the questions that have so far been asked in the previous years with respect to the respiratory system. Well, first question says, in a normal person when resting, the breathing rate per minute is 10 to 12 times, 14 to 16 times, 20 to 24, 36 to 40. Normally, the breathing time as uh, one, has rec uh, one records is not very static. It's not a fixed value. It depends upon a number of the factors, that is your altitude, where you are, that is the height from the sea level, your physical state, etc. But in the normal standard state, we consider it to be the 14 to 16 times. That a normal healthy person at normal atmospheric pressure breathes about 14 to 16 times. If you go to higher altitude, to the higher you will go, the higher the breathing rate would become. That means the number of times you will be breathing in or breathing out would increase. Same thing if you are exercising right from a time you start exercising till the point you add up with exercising, what will happen that uh, breathing rate would increase. But there will come a limit beyond which you can't breathe anymore. Right, which varies. That's why you realize that at least the practice. Why? It's just such that they get their body gets used to more time, more number of times of breathing per minute, which is further controlled by the medulla oblongata, the back part, the stem of the brain that you call as. Next. 
which of the following correctly describe the flow of inhaled air from nostrils to lung inhaled in means inside that means the air is outside and that air is going in the air that is once taken in is no more air it will become inhaled air the air that is coming out down from the lungs up to the nostril is the air that we call as exhaled air outside external outside external means outside the body now the orders are nasopharynx trachea larynx bronchioles lungs nasopharynx larynx trachea bronchial lungs nasopharynx trachea pharynx bronchioles lungs pharynx larynx bronchial trachea lungs first nasopharynx to trachea no because larynx comes before trachea so the first option is not there third option nasopharynx to trachea not there because from nasopharynx it goes to larynx to pharynx and then to larynx pharynx to larynx larynx to bronchi no larynx it goes to bronchi so the third is fourth is also incorrect and the correct option left is nasopharynx or pharynx to larynx and larynx to trachea trachea to bronchioles so bronchi bronchioles and then to the lungs so this option is the correct one right next the cells which generate the olfactory response are present in olfactory you see when we talk of the nervous system or you might have read in the nervous system that different type of responses we have five senses and we have got the five different type of responses like visionary for eyes auditory for ears gustatory for taste similarly olfactory for smell that means the air we are inhaling in or exhaling out naturally it is the air that we are inhaling in that may have some sort of odor some sort of smell now there are certain cells which are very sensitive to these odors these smells and where are these cells present are they present nostrils larynx trachea or lungs if we see these cells are present in the nostrils that's why if you try if you close your nose and you try to eat something that is uh, uh, that that is producing some odor some smell you, after eating from the mouth you may not feel the smell why because as you are eating the smell that is being produced do not reach a uh, nostril and passes in through the nostril or nasal cavity and it is in the nasal cavity these cells are present that we call as olfactory cells so it is in the olfactory region in the uh, what do you call it nasal cavity we have got the olfactory cells that is olfactory response is associated with the nostril and the nasal cavity because larynx will come out down from the mouth and so also the trachea and the lungs am i right next the protective layer found covering the lungs in thoracic cavity Thora thoracic cavity means in the chest cavity pericardium pericardium is the layer around heart is the outermost protective layer of the heart endothelium you know is the layer of blood capillaries periosteum is the one which is found above the large bones so what are we left with we are left with pleura only 
Pleura is the protective layer found in the chest cavity that provides the protection and mechanical support to the lungs or the lobes of the lungs. Next, a pair of lungs are present in cranial cavity. Cranial is here, the skull. Thoracic, yes. That is the chest. Abdominal down, below this part, below the diaphragm. Up to your uh, pelvic part, up to the leg region, is the abdominal cavity. And synovial cavity is the cavity space between the two bones. You know, there are joints like elbow joints, knee joints. One bone is coming in here, other bone is coming in here. Then there is some space. This space is what is called a synovial cavity, which is filled with a fluid called synovial fluid. So, for the question, a pair of lungs are present in chest cavity, that is the thoracic cavity. Next. The total number of the lobes of the lungs present in the chest cavity is 2, 3, 5, 7. Now, total number of the lobes. We do say a pair of lungs. But each lungs, when we say lungs, lungs consists of lobes. And as I mentioned when discussing about the respiratory system, that on the right uh, side of the uh, chest cavity or the thoracic cavity, there are three lobes. Right side and on the left side there are two lobes because there is a triangle of fish-shaped heart also present. Hence, the total number of lobes comes out to be 5. Hence, the correct answer is C, 5. That is, the total number of the lobes present in the lungs are 5, 3 on the right-hand side and 2 on the left-hand side. Next. Among humans, trachea is a bony structure. It can't be, because if it is a bone, it will be hard. And then it cannot contract and relax as the air passes in, come, goes in and goes out. So the first one is out. Muscular structures, muscles, no. Because normally the muscles are found attached to the bones or they form the inside lining of the body parts. They don't form the complete organ. As it is. Cartilaginous, yes. That is the correct option. Because the fourth choice is partially bony. Partially means 50%, 40% bony. But that's not the case. As I, uh, as I mentioned that uh, trachea is not a bony structure. Not a bony structure, that means it's not, it doesn't consist of any sort of a bone. It is made up of only carti cartilages. So, the second option is the correct option. Next, the inner lining of the trachea and bronchi are lined with columnar epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, endothelium, ciliated epithelium. These are the different type of the epitheliums. And in day-to-day -day life, you must have realized that when it comes to the cuff, the source of the cuff is lungs. It comes out from the lung, uh, thoracic cavity. And how does it comes out? Is there any pump? Any motor that pushes it up? No. It's not there. Actually, if we look at the tracheal part or the other uh, part of the respiratory system, the inside is lined with the cells which have got these hair-like structures. Am I right? These hair-like structures are what we call as cilia. What these cilia do, they keep on beating. Beating means, if this is the cilia, in next stage, it will just ha go like this. In next stage, it will take a turn like this. And next, then it will come like this. 
before it comes back into the normal state. That means it keeps on beating like this. As it beats, that this is cilia, it beats here, takes a turn, stands here like this, and then again beats. Now, this beating of the cilia helps to filter the air. That means as the air is passing in, there are some dust particles, there are some bacteria, etc. That may be there. Because bacteria, microorganisms, we don't see them. That we just pick it from the air that we are about to inhale, throw it away and then breathe in. No, we can't do that. Right? That is why we sometimes use the mask. Nose mask or mouth mask. Because the, those masks help to filter the air that we are breathing in. Now, these dust particles, if get accumulated or they enter into the lungs, they will block the alveolar structure. They will block the other respiratory tracts. So, what this does, they keep on colliding them. And the mucus which is secreted up by the cells here in the lining, that we call as goblet cells. These particles, they will get trapped in this mucus, lining of the mucus. And slowly and steadily, this mucus would be pushed upward to the mouth or, or to the nasal cavity that we blow off. Or we just uh, spit out. That means the cells must have the cilia. And if you look at the word cilia, cilia matches the ciliated. That means the inside lining of the uh, epithelium of the trachea or the other respiratory tract is lined with ciliated epithelium. In case if it's instead of trachea, bronchi, if it is. Uh, love, nasopharynx, nostrils, etc., whatever the case may be, as long as it is a part, is a tubular structure associated with the respiratory system, then it is lined with the ciliated epithelium. Next, the structure associated with the sweet sound produced by the birds. Sweet sound, you must have heard early in the morning by the quail, uh, sings or any other bird sings, it produces a very sweet sound. It's a melodious sound that you call in English. Now, which part of the body that helps them produce that sweet sound? Is it larynx? Likes the structure that produces sound, but may or may not be sweet. Buccal cavity is the mouth. Nasopharynx, there is no, no, uh, no part that can produce sound because there is nothing to vibrate. So it is syrinx sy in the birds that in the larynx part there are other modi uh, modified structures that makes the sound to vibrate some some way somehow such that the sound that com comes out is more melodious is more sweet than the harsh sounds. Next, Adam's apple. Adam's apple, this projection that we see in the neck of the male members of the human society, uh, clearly visible in human males, is projection found above. Nasopharynx, trachea, larynx, epiglottis. As I mentioned, is a projection that uh, lies above the larynx in the uh, respiratory uh, tubular structure. Why? Because males-wise, if you look, it has got lower pitch and higher amplitude. Whereas if compared to the female's voice, which has got a higher pitch and low amplitude, that loudness is uh, less, but it travels faster. Whereas when it comes to the male's voice, it's louder, but it's not uh, travels faster, it doesn't cover much of a distance. That's where the difference comes in the larynx, uh, of a male and female member of the human society. And because of that, what we realize, the difference lies in the larynx, which is the uh, sound-producing organ.